Every freaking night, I would feel constant stingings around my body, some more painful than others. Or, I would feel something crawling up my arm, my leg, or even my fucking face. Like, get the fuck off me, you cunt! Alright y'all, this is my first animated story, so I hope y'all enjoy it. But without any further ado, let's start this. This story takes place when I was in the 8th grade, or Sec 2 as we call it here in Montreal, about 3 years ago or so. My family and I were living in a relatively small apartment for about a year but were forced to move out since the building was getting really really rusty as time went on. We started to notice some major problems mostly within the water pipes and the heating system of the apartment. But it wasn't just that. Everything was getting on in years and the association that owned all of the apartments we lived on finally decided that renovations would have to follow. But everyone in the apartments had to move out for the time being. The house we were redirected to was still in the same neighborhood so I wasn't particularly sad about moving. I was still going to see my friends regardless and nothing would change. Plus, my mom told me the rooms were much bigger than the ones at our last apartment so I was pretty excited. Once we moved in, Yo, I already knew I was gonna have a good time. This place was huge as a mother Yo, the rooms were huge, the kitchen was huge, everything was like twice the size as our last apartment. And the backyard, yo, the backyard. Just after taking one look at it, I could already imagine all the endless amount of fun my friends and I were gonna have. All these games of soccer, tag, sorry England. Although, I noticed some very odd things just outside of our apartment. You see, the street we lived on was covered with old mattresses and other house furniture. And it wasn't just around our apartment. The whole street had old couches, chairs, and beds just scattered around everywhere. This was the first red flag. But my naive mind at the time didn't think much of it. Maybe they were broken. Maybe they just replaced them with newer ones. I was too excited to move in and couldn't see the bigger picture in all of this and so was my family. For me, this was the place to be. The one where I would live until I was old enough to move out. Or so I thought. That said, there was one thing that I absolutely hated about this place, and that was the neighbors. But not because they were loud and played music at 3 a.m. in the morning. No, 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 no. That would be way too simple. I hated them because they were dirty. No, 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 not in that sense. My guy, get your mind straight, you nasty little f They were some messy and unclean people and my mom hated them too because of it. Let me explain. You see, my mom is the definition of a neat freak. Above all else, she hates living in an untidy house. So that means you clean your dishes after eating, you clean your room every week, and never leave dirty plates on the table. Well, I can't lie to y'all. I wasn't the cleanest person at that age, or ever, as a matter of fact. And even to this day, I'm still not. But, 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 but. I slowly developed a neat freak attitude as well, so when we saw how dirty our neighbors were, it kind of rubbed us the wrong way. But we didn't think too much of it. They were some dirty ass fucking neighbors, that's all. Fast forward to about 3 months living in this apartment and I'm overwhelmed with exams that I really should have studied for earlier. Sleeping is becoming much more difficult and I often wake up to some painful stingings. The next day, as soon as I wake up I would notice some black marks on my back and around my arms. Something was really fucking wrong. I told my mom about it and she told me that she felt the same things while she was sleeping and later on, my brother also reported the same occurrences. My mom assumed that we had bed bugs and that we probably received it from, you guessed it, a dirty ass neighbors. She called an exterminator right away to check it out. After hearing this, I thought that was it. The exterminator would come and kill all these pests in one fell swoop and that would be the end of it. 
But fucking A was I wrong. The exterminator didn't come until weeks later, and the following nights were one of the worst nights of my life. And that's not an exaggeration. Every freaking night, I would feel constant stingings around my body, some more painful than others. Or, I would feel something crawling up my arm, my leg, or even my fucking face. Like, get the fuck off me, you cunt! In an absolute panic, I would get out of bed swiftly and run to the light switch. And that's when I would see all of them, sprawling around on my bed trying to find a place to hide. It was disgusting, as well as terrifying. This was my bed, the same bed I used to sleep on in our previous apartment. And it became the feeding ground of all those bugs, and I was the main meal. My blood more specifically. How was I going to sleep? I couldn't not go to sleep. I had school tomorrow. I had exams coming up. I tried killing as many of them as possible and figured there wouldn't be any more sprawling out. Sometimes, I managed to sleep through it by a miracle but woke up the next day with marks all over my body. Other times, I wouldn't sleep at all and feel like total shit when I got to school the next day. Although, one night I couldn't take it anymore and decided to sleep in my parents' bed instead of my own. It wasn't perfect, but at least I could get a full night's sleep without waking up in a panic. We stuck with that method until the exterminator came, and when he did, god damn was I happy. This guy came fully equipped with a special coat, some sprays, and poison containers that looked like they would kill me even if I touched them. The exterminator does his work and sprays every inch of the apartment. We leave the house to let the poison take effect, and while I'm away, I'm thinking of all the dead bugs this genocide is going to leave, and imagining how all these bugs must be suffering as of now. Fast forward two hours later, and we all come back home. I inspect my room and see dead bugs in every corner. Some still alive trying to crawl away, but I execute them with no mercy. Haha! <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Got a little carried away. Back to the story. The rest of the day passes by, and finally, it's night time. And my mom suggests that I should try and sleep in my room once again. A little nervous, I accept. The whole night, I'm thinking that there's probably a group of them that survived that are still out to get me. But after a while, I manage to go to sleep. And the night goes surprisingly well actually. No bed bugs came to violate me in my sleep and I woke up with no marks on my body. It's all well that ends well, right? Well, y'all saw the title. You know there's gonna be a part two. One week. It only took one week for all of these pests to resurface again in all of our bedrooms. Not only that, but things got a lot worse actually. <laughs>